Hi, in this session we're going to be looking at some of the menu options and how to configure the Suprema Face Station 2. So what we're going to be doing here is just going through the configuration settings on the Face Station 2. Um, the first thing that we do is we press the little symbol in the top left hand corner for the four squares and that takes us into our menu. Now, Normally we would have some administrative users set up on the on the terminal um, so that would prevent you from, from anybody from just accessing the menu um, but at the moment uh, it's a completely clear and blank device so it's allowed us to get straight in. So as you can see it uh, times out if you uh, choose not to click on anything for a little while so I think probably the first thing that we're going to do is to try and change that uh, otherwise it could be a little bit irritating as we're going through some of the options so I want to display and sound and uh, the first option I'm going to change is menu timeout so I can just tap that and scroll down um, and I can just for now I'm going to say always on I would normally probably set that to be 60 seconds and that's just in case uh, somebody was uh, enrolling an employee something like that and then they decided to not come all the way out of the menu and leave the menu uh, unlocked so 60 seconds is what I normally do but just for the purposes of our demonstration here I'll set it to be always on so while we're in here we can have a look at a few of the other items uh, so we have a backlight timeout you may have seen already how the device can fade uh, into a sort of darker mode um, so that's basically like energy saving mode also helps to preserve the life of the display a little bit um, so at the moment it's 20 seconds we can leave it to be always on if we want to do that or um, 60 seconds is what uh, I typically do OK to that uh, down at the bottom we've got uh, voice instruction it's currently set to be off I normally like to have that one on so I can put that little toggle switch across to the on position and I can also choose to adjust the volume um, so we get a nice little bar going across here it's on 50% volume at the moment I'll take that up to say 60% 60 and okay that okay so that's most of the uh, uh, items in um, display and sound that I would normally look at changing. There are obviously other um, items that we could look at but um, perhaps not for, for this sort of more basic setup that we're going to be doing today. So we'll press the uh, arrow to go back to the main menu um, and then just walking around from the front um, if we go to do authentication next so this controls uh, how uh, the Face Station 2 uh, reacts to faces and reacts to things like uh, cards and fobs and that kind of thing. So just on this screen here um, we've got a few items. We've got an enroll timeout, um, a face pose position so we can adjust that, that which is, uh, gets used during the enrollment process. Um, four is what I just typically leave it to be on but if you increase the number of poses that will probably make a, a, a more stronger enrollment. Um, but I'm going to leave that as four for the time being. Um, ambient brightness is something I normally just leave as normal um, but if it is going to be if the device is going to be located in an area where um, the, the ambient brightness or the, the, the lighting conditions are particularly high then obviously you, you can you can change that if you need to or of course adjust it and set it to be automatic okay um, the motion sensor so this is quite important um, so as things stand out of the box the device will try to uh, pick up any movement pick up somebody's face and then put itself into scan mode where it tries to identify that person and then uh, therefore clock that person in clock that person out now that's absolutely fine for some uh, locations but there might be some uh, areas where we locate a device where there's lots of people walking past the device all the time and we don't want it to uh, accidentally uh, clock people in clock people out as they're walking past so to change that we can go to motion sensor and we can actually just switch it off so when we do that uh, and it's in the off position in order for to get the uh, face station 2 to start its scan mode we just have to tap the screen uh, we can look at that later. So I'm, I'm going to set that one to be off just for the time being. 
at the top here where we have authentication mode uh, it's got a little number next to it if we have a look here this basically is a nicely nicely displayed screen uh, so we can say well how, how, how what sort of uh, authentication settings do we have so we have face only that's you know that's the only uh, icon that we have on that line uh, that's set to be always we've got card plus face or card plus uh, pin number or we've got ID number plus face and uh, ID number plus pin number so these are the three options which by default are set to be on now what I normally tend to change is the card one um, some people who are given cards or fobs don't always want effectively a two-factor form of identification uh, sometimes they just want to be able to use a fob or a card only um, uh, without having to do anything else so to change that I can uh, click on the line and uh, I can uh, basically remove the key and I can remove the face so it's basically just a, a, a card or a fob only would be fine for that and that's changed it there okay if I come back out of there um, and scroll down a little bit uh, I can have a look at some of the um, face recognition um, values um, now most of these we would just uh, keep as default um, you've got a fake enroll uh, option uh, if, which, which would basically try to uh, eliminate people enrolling a, a fake face a picture of a face or a mask or something um, you've got different levels of security it just depends how far you want to go generally speaking we leave it as it is um, but if you wanted to look at any more of these uh, items in more detail uh, the manual can give us some some further ideas about what those are for down at the bottom here we've got time TNA mode or time attendance mode so we can choose whether or not uh, we want the uh, user to uh, press a, a function key to clock in and a function key to clock out or whether or not they they can just clock without uh, pressing any button at all so I'm going to say uh, I'm going to change that one to be say not used um, but you have a number of different options there um, so normally it would either be uh, by user or not used that would be the, the typical choices that you would have um, it could be fixed if you were putting the face station on uh, the inside of a turnstile for example and uh, you might have another one on the inside for coming out and that might be fixed as being an out but uh, generally speaking we, we don't normally need to use it okay um, <clears throat> so I think that's everything that I'd like to cover so far in, under authentication so we'll go back from there We've had a look at display and sound already. Let's have a look at network. Okay, so we've got uh, settings for Ethernet, settings for wireless in there. I've got uh, some other settings for um, some uh, serial uh, communication methods. If we just concentrate on Ethernet using uh, an, you know, basically using a, a, a network cable, if we click on the uh, icon there, so by default they uh, set up uh, uh, as DHCP. Now, quite often we don't want that. We don't want it to be set up as DHCP. We want to put a fixed IP address in, especially if you're using software such as Focus, um, where the software is basically trying to pull the device. Uh, we really need somewhere fixed for it to aim to all the time. So uh, one thing before we make any changes, one thing to um, bring to everyone's attention is before we can change an IP address usually with a Suprema device the device needs to be plugged into the network um, if we try to change some of the values here and press OK it might accept them but uh, it might not actually change the, the settings uh, we could restart the device and it would have gone back to its, what it was originally so that's something to watch out for so always make sure that you have a network cable uh, plugged into the device Obviously, the other end of the network cable needs to be on the network uh, for us to be able to successfully change the network settings. So I'm going to untoggle DHCP, and that will then allow me to change the IP uh, value in here. So probably the easiest way is just to press clear, and then I can start from uh, the beginning. 192.1.168. Uh, sorry, uh, 
dot one dot two five three for example so at that stage what I normally do is press the little uh, keyboard symbol there that takes the keyboard away and it shows me the rest of the settings well do you know what there was a absolutely fine for me those settings there so I'm just going to uh, accept those as they are so I click on OK and that's that's our uh, network save, settings saved okay. if I move across now to device so I have a number of different options in here um, you can use the device as, a, as a, an intercom if you really wanted to uh, though not many do uh, but the real uh, things I'm going to be looking at in here are things like the d date and time. So if I go into there, now uh, there is an option to use uh, Time Sync. Uh, you would use that if you're using something like Biostar 2 uh, as your software, um, or some other software perhaps which supports Time Sync. Um, if you're using Focus, then we would normally have that Time Sync switched off. So I'll just untoggle that. And once you've untoggled it, then that allows us to change um, the date and time as well. So uh, if we wanted to change the um, date format, uh, we can change it to something like UK DDMM YYYY. Okay. You can change the time format to be uh, AM or PM, uh, or you can have it as 24 hour clock. I'll leave it as AM PM for now, I think. So. Anyway, going back to the date and time itself, so we can click on here, uh, we can put the, the date in, well that's correct, uh, oh sorry, and uh, we could select the time up there and make sure that we've got the right time in there, so just looking at my watch, it's uh, currently um, um, 13, I'll get that right in a minute, 13, um, 48, yeah, looks about right, okay, right, so, um, so that's, that's the, the date format set up and the date and time set up. I mean, obviously with Focus, you'd normally have it set so that it was uh, continuously uh, updating the date and time um, f uh, uh, every time it does a download normally. Um, so if you didn't want to put the date and time in correctly at the beginning, it doesn't really matter once it's on the network and once Focus is communicating to it, then it should be okay. All right, so we'll come out of there. Um, so other things that we can look at within this device menu, um, relay, so at the moment uh, by default the relay is set to be off, if we were to set it to be on then every um, positive identification of someone's face would fire the relay, so if you wanted some very very basic access control just based upon as long as you're enrolled on the device it will uh, fire the relay, unlock the door, release the turnstile for example, then that would be what you would use. Um, so device info is quite useful, this is where we can get um, the uh, model information, the device ID, um, the firmware version, the MAC address um, and other that kind of information, so that's a, that's a useful one. Um, so let's come back out of that. Um, if you wanted to um, uh, reboot the device for any reason, so we can do that from within here it'll just prompt us to confirm that we want to restart and the device would just reboot. Um, we are probably, if we want to have a bit of a look at the memory information, it just shows us our sort of breakdown between um, uh, different segments of the memory. So uh, just probably nothing really to look at very often, but uh, it's there if you ever needed to look at that in more detail. So for now, we're just going to leave that as it is. That will be how we would normally just set it up. We'll come out of de uh, device. And finally, we'll have a look at event log. So the event log would normally show us everything that we've done so far in the clock. And this log file just gets uh, added to over time and uh, it, it, it gives us a, a full audit log really of everything which has ever been done with the clock every time it's been communicated to, any time anybody's gone into the menu, made any changes every clocking, every new enrolment for example so very useful and uh, great to see but uh, what can happen is that the log file can get extremely large over time and when I mean over time I'm talking a few years really so um, 
if you feel like the log file is getting a little bit big, if you feel that um, it's, the device is starting to slope ever so slightly, not be quite as sharp as it used to be, um, perhaps not always respond quite as well as it would do when um, trying to communicate to it through the software, as long as you've got everything up to date, uh, as long as you've downloaded all of your clockings, then there's no reason really why you couldn't delete your log file. Obviously once it's gone, it's gone. Any of that, um, any of those, those uh, that history has been will be lost at that stage. But uh, you know, if if it, if that's what it needs to uh, get the device uh, in a good state again, then it's probably worth doing. Uh, there is also a search feature on here as well. So I can just click on search. It's quite advanced, really. So I, we can search um, for a, a based upon a, a date and time um, band. Uh, we can search for um, by user ID, so in other words, um, all transactions made by a particular user, um, by a particular event. So quite, quite an advanced search facility within there, which can be very useful sometimes when um, trying to track um, problems. So um, we'll come out of that and um, I'm going to just try clearing the log file down now. So I click on the bin, delete all logs, and there they've all gone. Uh, and it's created. Oh, it, automatically created an extra uh, log entry for me, which was just the fact that I deleted all of the logs, um, which is obviously time stamped. Okay. So um, to come to get out of the uh, menu, we'll just click on the uh, cross up there. It takes us back to our normal screen. Um, and if you remember, uh, we changed the, this, the settings on here so that uh, you actually would have to tap a key to start scan mode. So if I were just, just to face, tap the screen there, user ID. and there we go, and it's got its voice uh, enabled now as well. So it puts it into face, scan mode. Or user ID. So that's everything I was hoping to cover, uh, just for a basic setup, a uh, typical setup that we might do of a Face Station 2. Uh, we're going to have another session avail made available where we can show how to enrol uh, users and administrators on the device. Thank you very much.